Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today I'm going to show you how to make this strawberry Yes, a strawberry dishcloth just like so. Now I ran out of red so I just uh, circled with pink. You know again the color choices are up to you and then this pattern also comes with the leafy topper just like so which is attached at the very end just like so. It's actually kind of just really really easily on there. So you don't have to do a lot of work in order to prepare this for afterward. But today you're going to learn how to make a granny square basically, well not a granny square I guess, but a granny triangle in order to make this work. And you'll sh I'll show you the ins and outs of being able to do so as well. So let's begin. Before I begin I'm just going to let you know that I am going to differentiate from or I'm going to deviate from the pattern just slightly but you can follow along and just watch what I'm doing here in order to make it simpler. So what we're going to do is start off with a slip knot just like so and then we need to create the center so that we can rotate around that. Let's begin by chaining four. So one, two, three and four and we go into the beginning chain just like so and we create a slip uh, stitch so that we have a complete circle right in the center. Notice how I'm kind of putting this with the outside. I wanted to make sure it's trapped around the center of the ring so it's easy to hide. Let's begin the next step. We're going to begin and we're gonna start off by chaining three which in the rules of crochet counts as a double crochet and we're gonna double crochet two more times right directly into the center of that ring. So we're gonna rotate around this ring. So we only want three sides instead of four as in a typical granny. So whenever we get to a corner in this particular project for when we're doing this kind of step is that it's gonna be chaining a three. One, two, three. Typically in granny squares it's always two. So we're going to then double crochet three more times into the center. So it needs that extra chain in order to make that curve uh, in, the t in the corner that is more than a 90 degree angle. So once you get your three in there, chain three, one, two and three. Coming back into the center for another three double crochet. And then you're not done yet. So you have one corner here, one corner but where's this corner? So you gotta finish it off. So you got a one, two and three and then just slip stitch it to the top of the chain three that you started with just like so. So how we start the remainder of this, so you can see that there's only three sides. So this is a triangle beginning. So I'll show you where to start the next round. The rounds are really easy to follow and actual fact once you get a hold of it you might not even need to watch the rest of this tutorial. The next stitch you're just gonna slip stitch until you can get to this corner here. So we're actually at the end of this corner but we're not in the right position. We have to be over here. So we're just gonna slip stitch across the two top of the double crochets that are available to you and also slip stitch into the chain three gap. And now you're ready to go. So here's what we're going to do for the corner. So you can see that there's three corners now and we're just gonna chain three which counts as one of the double crochet and you're gonna double crochet two more times. And two just like so and then you're going to chain three. Why are you chaining three? Because you wanna maintain that corner. So one, two and three and then double crochet three times more into that same space. Just like so. So let's continue to go around. Okay so here's where we are. We have one corner done but here's the next corner but we have to get there first. So in this pattern every time you're jumping over, over spaces or jumping over stitches you're always gonna chain two. One and two to do so and then we start the next corner which is what? It's three double crochet and three chain and three double crochet all in the same space. So we can turn that corner. So that was three double crochet, chain three times and then double crochet three times. Okay so that's another corner but here's the next corner over here so we have to get there. So what do we do? We chain two, one and two and then again double crochet three times. And then we're turning the corner so that means it's gonna chain three, one, two and three and then double crochet three more times. Ok 
Okay, and then we have to get back to this corner here, but there's a space there, so we chain two first, and then we slip stitch it to the beginning of the top chain three that we started with, and we're ready for the next round, just like so. Let's begin round number three. So again, just like I showed you before, we have to make ourselves to the first corner. We're not there yet, we're actually early, so we have to slip stitch across the next two double crochets. So we're doing this every time we're doing a round, and then we get, we double our slip stitch right into the chain three on the corner. And so now we're beginning to do the first corner. So we chain three, one, two, and three, double crochet two times. Okay, so then you have your three as in the rules of crochet, and then chaining three, and then same space because we're still maintaining that corner. So double crochet three times. So now the corner is further apart from us now than it was before. So in each one of these spaces we're always going to put three double crochets but how do we get there? We have to chain two first and then do the next, this is the gapping space in the middle be between the corners. So every time you hit one of these it's always three double crochet and then chain two. Now we're here on the corner so it's three double crochet this time. So the corners are always the same, three double crochet, three chains and three double crochet. One, two, and three. So the only difference is, is that there's gonna be more and more spaces put in between the corner sp spaces. That's the only difference. So now that you have that, our next corner is way over here but we're not there yet so we have to chain two. Fill in the spaces in between. There's only one this time. There will be more as this thing gets bigger. And there'll be three double crochets into each one of those and chain two. Here's your corner. So three double crochet. Okay, chain three because you are in a corner. And then three double crochet again. Okay, so now the next corner is way over here. It's already done because we started it. So we only have the space left. So we chain two to get there. Three double crochets into each one of the spaces in between the corners. And then chain two because we have to then attach it to the top of the chain three. So in the next revolutions uh, we have to do a few more of these and but I'm going to get you started because the really there's no difference of what I'm showing you right now. The only difference is, is that there will be more gapping spaces. You can see now you have your corner, your corner is here and now you have two more spaces. So that's the only difference. So let me get started on the next one. So you have two more revolutions to do this. So I'm going to start you off with the first one is that we're gonna slip stitch ourselves to the corner just like you have been. And I'm gonna let you do both of these revolutions on your own. So you're going to slip stitch to the corner and now chain three and double crochet three times. Chain three because you are in the corner and then double crochet three times. Okay. And then we're now in the gapping spaces between uh, the corners. So how we do that is chaining two and then we just fill it in with three double crochets into each one of the chain spaces going across. Okay, chaining two because you got another space. Three double crochets here and then you're chaining two and then finally your corner. So it's three double crochet. One, two, and three chaining three, one, two, and three, and then three double crochet. So I want you to finish this round just like I've showed you before and then I want you to do one more round of this and then we're gonna do something a little different from that point. So continue to do that. Now since I last left you I did one extra round and I'm just coming around and I'm just going to slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain three. So the final revolution that I have for you today is that we need to make sure that we have a nice a thick border just like so. So how we achieve that is that we immediately start off and we don't make our way, we don't slip stitch our way to the corner like we have been. We immediately just chain up three and then we double crochet into each one of the double crochets that are available. No biggie, right? So on the corners what you're always going to do is that you're always gonna put in five double crochets. So one, two, 
three, four, and five. So when you're working your way down you see that there's three double crochets, there's chain two, three double crochets. So each one of the double crochets is going to get one double crochet. No biggie right? So you're just following exactly what's there and then simply when you get to your chain two spaces you put in two double crochets into those space itself. Okay so one double crochet into each of the double crochets and chain two spaces will have two double crochets and the corners will have five double crochets. So continue that all the way around and then when we come back I'll show you more. So I'm making my way all the way around. I'm filling in my very last space of just two double crochets because that's what you need and then we just have to slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain three. And then we're just gonna fasten that off and weave in our ends. So now you completely have a triangle just needs to be stretched a little bit and this is making up the strawberry. So in the next part of this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to make the leaf and when you go to attach the leaf after you're done with it you just have to go through the top of the top here. So you just slip stitch it right through an actual stitch just like so. So you can see it's actually really loose there. If you want to sew more of it on you can do so but that's what it's calling for in the pattern. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Today's tutorial we're going to make towel toppers just like so. This is the leafy top and I actually got this pattern from an existing pattern already on Yarnspirations and this is a strawberry. I really liked the towel topper. The instructions are right here. This will take me a little bit more than 10 minutes in order to show you how to do it because I'm gonna take my time. But once you get one of these done I just took a tea towel and I fanned it up and I slapped my stitch right through it so that I can hang this up when I'm not using it afterward. So this is a great little idea. I love the design. You can obviously change it to any colors that you wish. I did orange because I thought it complemented the green quite nicely. So today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make one of these. Today's tutorial you're either going to need Lily Sugar and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter depending on where you live may have access to this. You're also gonna need a size G four millimeter crochet hook today and you just have to do one solid color but again this is your creativity. You can change it as many colors as you want and choose any color that you wish. So let's begin. I'm just going to start off with a slip knot leaving an extra long tail to begin just in case I want to deal with that afterward. It is going to go through the wash machine so you wanna make sure that you are getting your loose ends all nice and snug into position. So we're going to start off with a slip knot and I want you to chain two. So let's do that. So one and two and then going to the beginning chain that you started with I want you to put five single crochets into that same stitch. This will make it go into a semicircle. So one, two, and three, four, and five. And we're not gonna go all the way around. This is only a semicircle. So now what I want you to do is turn the project around and we're gonna start working going in the other direction. To begin row number two we're just going to begin by chaining one starting with this, the first one that is directly underneath. We wanna put two single crochets into that one and into every one of the five that are there. So that we come to the next one that's available to you and we put in two there as well. So two single crochets into each one of the stitches going across. So this went then from five stitches and by the time you finish it's gonna turn it into ten. And we come into our last one. Got our two in there and then that's row number two. So let's begin our next one. Let's turn our work and begin. Let's begin our next one. We're going to chain one and we're going to put in two single crochets into the same one there. The same stitch underneath and then the next one is going to be one. So the repeat pattern going all the way across is that the next one is gonna have two single crochets and then the next one will have one. Okay, so the next one is two single crochets and the next one will have one. Keep doing that all the way across. So the next one is two. So it's growing it evenly. And the next one is one. And the next one is two. And finally the last one is one. That last one's kinda tricky but I got it in there and that's good to go. So that is round number three. Let's turn our work and we're now going to move up to round number four. Again a very easy one. We're going to chain one first and we're going to single crochet into the same one here. So right underneath 
and then we're going to single crochet into the next one. And this is when we're going to start creating the fan shaped leaves. This is the, the foundation of it. So we're gonna chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, coming into the same stitch for a single crochet. Okay, and then we're going to then put in two single crochets in a row, one and two. So then the next one is going to be the same thing that you just did here. So a single crochet to start, and then we chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then single crochet into the same one, and then single crochet into the next two. Okay, so we're gonna start out in the next one. So it's one single crochet and we're gonna do the six. Just so you know that see how it's right directly above? I know that I'm in the right position. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then single crochet into the same one. And what I mean by that is that there's only five leaves. So I notice that the middle leaf there is right on top of the, the middle one right there. So we're going to single crochet the next two. And then the next one is another leaf. So single crochet, chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, coming into the same one. And then two more single crochets in a row. Okay, and then here's the next one. So here's the final leaf. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, into the same one. Single crochet, and then just single crochet, finally into the last one, just like so. Okay, so that's what it looks like at this point. This is uh, round number four, row number four. And the next one is our final row. And so it doesn't look like leaves yet, but we're gonna be playing within these spaces next. So here's the concluding row. So we're gonna turn our work one more time and we're going to start off in chain one and single crochet into the very first one. And here's where we're going to start doing the repeat pattern. So the first, we just go right to the chain itself and we do one single crochet. We do a half double crochet we do a double crochet and then we do two treble crochets. So we wrap twice for the trebles. We do two of those. And this time what we're gonna do at this point is that we're kind of in the middle of the leaf. We're a little bit past it and we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three and it's called a pico and you come into the beginning chain that you started with that three and pull through and through as a slip stitch. And then what we're going to do is then treble again back into the space. And we decrease it going back down the other side. So one treble, one double, one half double, and one single. So you'll notice that this design, because you trebled or you did this in the, in the second one, this Pico, it makes the leaves look like they're going on a slight twist, which is kinda neat. So the next one that we just uh, jump over all of this section and just go right to the next gapping space. So we start off with a, a single, we have a half double, we have a double, we have two trebles. So remember to wrap that hook twice for trebles. And then this is where that pico is again. So we how to do that is you chain three, one, two and three going into the beginning chain of the three pulling through and through and then you treble only once coming down the other side and then you double you half double so you're getting smaller and smaller and then you single and so just keep that same patterning going. So just immediately just start the next one and remember single, half, double, two trebles, the pico, a treble, a double, half double and single down there and I'll meet you back at the end of this line. So just keep repeating that. Once you get that final one in there just make sure that you just single crochet to the very last single crochet that's available like this and now you're done and you can fasten that off. So we're gonna do that and grab our fancy dancy scissors at this point and trim and what I wanna use is a darning needle to hide in these loose ends. Remember that it's really important because this will go through the wash machine. So I wanna make sure that this is uh, really buried into the stitching as well as this as well. So the next part we're going to do is that we're going to create the, 
the actual chain in order for you to be able to hang your tile topper. Let me show you how to do that because I got a little technique for you just in case you don't have two balls of yarn. For the towel topper hanger section right here is that you're going to want to use two strands but if you only have one yarn ball, no big deal, there's two uh, ends to the yarn right? There's one on the inside of the ball and one on the outside. So what I need to do is that I create an extra long tail here because I'm gonna use this to go through the towel in order to put it with the darning needle and then I'm going to create a slip knot using both. So a nice thick chain just like so and what I want to do is when I begin I want to go through right through the center of your leaf. Okay and then I'm gonna use both strands and going around and pulling it through. I really don't want this falling apart in a washing machine so I just do that as an extra precaution. Okay so I just do it the one time and then I let the stragglers fall out of the way so that I can use those afterward in order to sew the towel. So all I'm just going to do is just chain 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm just gonna let more yarn come from here. That was six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And so I'm going to do this and slip stitch to this to the again to the center just like so and pull it through and through like so and I'm going to leave a generous tail on this side as well so I can use those to sew in those in afterward as well. And I'm just gonna use this and I'm just gonna pull it through. And just with the darning needle I'm gonna bury that. So the beginning ones that I had started with for this chain is the ones that I'm going to use here in order to go through the towel. So I will, I'm gonna hide these ones in, I'm gonna hide these ones in and the towel what I'm gonna do is that you can grab any towel and just fold it into a fan shape just like so. So you put this here on a darning needle and essentially all you just wanna do is going right through the fan section of your towel just go right through and then just go on the other side like so. I went through twice and then bring it back through the other side. Go through the leaf one more time and then go back and then back to the front again and just make sure you tie it really good on the inside here and just weave in your loose ends so that you can hide in the ends. So that would be how you would make a towel topper and uh, just again just using a darning needle just go right through your work in order to make that happen and this will be a kind of a cool towel topper. On behalf of the Yarn Inspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd, thank you so much for joining me today.